Joining us now for reaction from New York is Monica Crowley, who's a senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research. And with me here in Washington is attorney Alan Orr. All right, guys, uh, you heard my take here. Everybody needs to be accountable. Alan, take a shot. Well, I think everybody is accountable. I think your concerns are about the individuals who are participating in the actual investigation, which doesn't mean the investigation itself has a problem. And there has not been an outcome yet. So why the big concern? If you're not guilty of a crime, then why is there a problem with going through the process? Uh, well, my concern is that when you populate your investigative team with individuals who have been either loyalists to the previous administration or who actively were engaged in the Hillary email investigation and actually helped edit Comey's announcement of the non-indictment indictment, that that kind of, that entanglement is the a mere appearance of a conflict of interest is not what you want in an investigation like this. An oh. appearance of a conflict in a case this serious is enough to shake the credibility of the investigation. And I'm not saying that everyone on the team is bad or they don't have, I'm not saying that. But if the shoe were on the other foot and Hillary Clinton were being investigated by a bunch of Trump loyalists who had written terrible things about Hillary and couldn't stand Hillary and were texting their boyfriend about Hillary, you'd be on this show going crazy about them. No, and I would no. actually say, you know something? You have a point there. Well, maybe Hillary Clinton was the scapegoat for some Trump supporters. But right now, this is just a bunch of stories about individuals. There's not a lot of paperwork to back it up. And this is what the Justice Department does. So the fact that they also handle the Clinton emails doesn't mean that they can't also handle this. This is what their duty is as attorneys to sort of deal with the facts before them. So the facts that they worked on prior cases or prior administrations have nothing to do with the instant case. They're looking for the facts. And that's what we're going after. So you think it's OK for partisans to be working on an investigation when they were loyalists to the previous administration and worked on the exoneration of Hillary Clinton. You don't have any, in, in the shoe on the other foot, you wouldn't have any problem. I would have any because they're professionals. Who well, what does are that mean? They're professionals. Officers, officers of the court. No, no, they're, they're officers perfect. of the court. None of, the only one perfect who ever walked the face of the earth, one perfect, Jesus Christ. Okay? okay, none of us are perfect, none of us are flawless. And a conflict of interest, an apparent conflict or an appearance of a conflict on a case like this is not what you want to do. Bob Miller is the smartest person around. Like, he's the smartest guy who ever lived, apparently. But he had no problem bringing in these people who hate Donald Trump. They despise the man. I don't know how you can be indep independent in your thought and process if you hate him as much as they did. Monica, I get you got to get you in on this. Well, look, you know, Alan says they're professionals. They're doing their job. And I'm sure there are professionals in the investigation. And the Democrats say this is much to do about nothing. This is an investigation that needs to reach its conclusion. And everybody's throwing a bunch of, you know, pixie dust up in the air, hoping that it goes away. Well, it may in fact be true, Laura, that this entire investigation was predicated on a lie the, about Russian collusion, which was essentially a frame of Donald Trump. The, these people never expected him to win. They expected Hillary Clinton to win. And so all of their possibly criminal and unethical shenanigans throughout the campaign to torpedo Donald Trump, and then once he was elected during the period of the transition to try to set him up on a Russian collusion narrative, they thought that all of that evidence Evidence would go away. And guess what? Donald Trump is now the president. That evidence is being uncovered left and right. And that's why the Democrats and the Mueller team, those who have in fact been corrupted, according to the evidence as we know it so far, that's why they are so frantically trying to deflect and lie about not just what they did, but about the president as well. I want to, uh, you guys to both listen to something that Adam Schiff also, of course, on the Intel Committee, what he said about this concern about the investigators. Let's watch. Why would you well, vote to not have because, access to read things? <laughs> the point was they didn't care what was in the underlying documents. They wanted to make a political statement. Uh, they wanted to feed the beast on Fox News. Uh, they wanted to do what they could to der derail the Mueller investigation. Monica, they're talking about the House Intel Committee wanting those uh, four pages that synopsis released to the public. They just want to feed the beast. They want to feed Fox. Well, they're trying to discredit Chairman Nunes. They're trying to discredit the House Intelligence Committee that's under uh, that's that's uh, exposing a lot of this corruption and a lot of this evidence. I can tell you tonight, Laura, based on uh, one of my one of my sources, that we will see all of these documents. We well, will I'm see the and there, there's more than one memo, why, and why we, we will see these documents. Why are we not documents. seeing it now? 
Why do we need to wait we, to see we, it? I think the whole will, the committee has been we, holding it. They're going through a process, and we will see them. I think the process should be bipartisan because the concern is bipartisan. So why has only part of the committee already seen the memo and the rest of the committee hasn't? Furthermore, why has DOJ not vetted the memo with regards to national security, which is the primary issue of all of this in the first place? So it doesn't sound like a very well, sound. Well, you know, the, the attacks on the attacks on uh, Chairman Nunes and, and the House Intelligence Committee that's doing incredible work here. Look, when they talk about, well, well, those who are attacking the, their investigation are trying to discredit the FBI and the DOJ and attacking these institutions is dangerous. Yeah. No, you know what? The top hierarchy of the FBI and DOJ, Laura, discredited themselves. And the We're one just talking name about the process. The one I'm name the missing process. from all of this, Laura, is Barack yeah. Obama. The idea that all of these people freelanced all of this or that well, anything happened in the I'm Obama not sure administration why we're talking about Barack Obama without tonight, his because blessing we're talking about the Mueller investigation is of yeah, Trump. All right, we're out of time. But uh, the, I think, look, the Democrats have a chance to see this memo. They could all go to the secure room to read this memo. Only, I think, a few have. Um, I'm always for, like, more sunshine, more transparency. Let's see what it is. Let's see if, I mean, maybe the Republicans are overblowing it. Maybe it's not a big deal. I don't know. I like to see it for myself. Uh, although seem, people seem really hot and bothered by it. So I think we should all see we it. We will see it. And guys, thank you very much. I'd love to have you both back.